if we can invent machines that can think, then those machines can invent machines that can think, they'll invent better machines, and very quickly the machines will be a thousand times more intelligent uh, than us. I don't think we can imagine that there would be any limit to where automation can be applied to, to human endeavour. It will literally be in everything that we touch. Artificial intelligence or machine-based learning algorithms have the potential to certainly revolutionise what we do. Automation is basically transforming that manual process into a totally automated process from the beginning to the end. So in the past, when we wanted to make decisions about resource allocation, we might use computers to enhance our decision-making capabilities. But what is happening is that we're starting to allocate the responsibility for making decisions to computers. And so we're abdicating, if you like, a moral responsibility for making decisions. The robots are here, they've been here for probably 30 or 40 years. It's funny the way that our brains react to the concept of A, artificial intelligence, and B, um, things like robots teaching robots. We tend to humanize artificial intelligence all the time and think about a robot in terms of a human aid. Our phone is, is right now the main robot and doesn't look anything like us. I don't think it's, there's been a limit to where automation has been applied in the last hundred years through the 20th century. Every aspect of human life has had automation applied to it. So I think that in the future, uh, human beings will be treated as drunk robots. What I mean by that is that we won't be allowed to drive, that when we sit down behind the wheel uh, of a car, we'll place the lives of other human beings at risk. They won't like that and they'll say, well, you're just like a drunk robot. The driverless car has been long touted as the eliminator of taxi drivers and truck drivers and bus drivers and so on. Instead of buying a car, we hire or rent the transportation service. It's seeing the car as a mechanism for transportation. And so it doesn't need to be owned, it can be shared. It's efficient, it makes sense. So for me, actually, the most important question is what do we want transport to look like in the future? Is this an opportunity to actually take cars off the roads? So you could step into the car at home, decide that, hey, I need to do a whole lot of work, I'm going to sit in the back, the car will drive on its own. There's no steering wheel, there's no uh, pedals, you're literally just a passenger there for the ride. As a car enthusiast, I don't want driverless cars in my future. But as a member of society, I understand that we have to have them. In some ways, the thing that's actually holding us back is the ethical questions. Uh, there's the ones that people have perhaps already heard of about who the machine should kill uh, when it's in a forced crash situation. Uh, then there's questions about the responsibility for accidents involving driverless vehicles. It's very rarely that you can pinpoint and say, this software has caused this. But in a driverless car, it's definitely not the human. It is a team who has prepared that software. And the decisions that have put in that software are going to be the ones that are going to go into law. We've already seen Tesla with its autopilot was partly to blame for a fatal car accident in the US. And that's where the driver allowed the car to drive itself. But the car always had the note on the screen saying that you must be able to retain control. And in this instance, the driver didn't, and the driver died after the car crashed into an object that it didn't detect. The biggest question around driverless cars for me is personal. Am I ready to trust my life to a robot? Automation will displace labour, and not just a little bit of labour, that labour across the planet. There is, you know, 800 million odd people in productive work that could be automated. 800 million, just 
Say that slowly to yourself as you watch this 800 million people. Uh, if I stood here and I announced that I was going to put 30% of the population out of work, I was going to radically disempower uh, some people, I was going to put enormous political power in the hands of other people, and I said I was going to do that because I'm a revolutionary, people would completely freak out and they would demand a say. Uh, but when technologists stand up and they say they're going to change the world with their, uh, you know, their artificial intelligences or their driverless transport, everyone says, oh, well, yeah, that's great. Uh, I look forward to, uh, to that brave new world. What do we do with all of those workers who might previously have been drivers or process workers or doing a lot of the process work which can now and is increasingly being automated? I think that if you think that technology is shaping politics and society, that means that we should have a politics of technology and we need to be exercising our democratic rights uh, when thinking about uh, these new technological futures. I'm actually a little more on the optimistic side about what AI means and what automation means because I think for its capacity to improve the human condition, the human experience, it outweighs the dangers. I strongly believe that automation not only has already had a really positive impact in our society, but that that is going to extend and accelerate in the future. Using these sorts of technologies, artificial intelligence, the smart technologies, really is going to offer the opportunity to test out ways to deliver support that's more cost effective, but I think even more importantly, builds a greater sense of autonomy and independence for a person that might be living with really high support needs from disability. It's fair to say that 3D printing could be a real game changer in the pharmaceutical arena. So you could imagine the doctor could even have a 3D printer on his desk and print your tablets while you're there you know, having your consultation. I think it's more a case of what do humans do with the extra time that's perhaps created and how do we reward humans for what that might enable in terms of creative potential. The elephant in the room when you talk to an engineer about robots is sex robots. And of course we know that sex sells and so if you can build a sex robot, it's kind of the killer app uh, for social robotics. If you can automate creativity, if you can create an artificial intelligence that's able to better the best human artists, then it, it really puts us in our place. I... Um, I remember just one day being able to visualise something that was just from my imagination and it was just a really amazing, poignant moment, I guess, where you suddenly realise the potential of a machine to compose space and time in a way that no other system had ever been able to do before. If we can invent machines that can think, then those machines can invent machines that can think. They'll invent better machines and very quickly the machines will be a thousand times more intelligent uh, than us. So this is called an intelligence explosion and it generates what people call a singularity. So the idea is, will it come to a point where that capacity to do complicated permutations and decisions can mimic human judgment and so that machines will effectively become just as smart as, as humans. The rate of, uh, of technological change uh, becomes near infinite and we lose control of human history as a result of having created um, uh, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is very, very good at answer very particular narrow questions, but coming up with questions, that's much more difficult. Given that we don't understand what makes us tick, I don't think we know what it would take to build a machine that could replace us. I think the key challenges that we're going to face as we enter this world where we're collaborating with artificial intelligence is understanding what human creativity is in this new world where you've got co-creation and collaboration between non-human entities. Career success for the next generation of managers will be evident in their ability to take on complex projects in different areas of organisations and to deliver results. Human agency still remains very, very powerful and I think that I trust um, human agency to recognise um, 
the limits and the limits that need to be placed and the decisions that need to be made when it comes to so-called technological advance. We shouldn't assume that just because something's possible that it's inevitable. It's, it's, it's up to us. It really is up to us. So robots offer no threat to humanity. If there's a threat to humanity, then it's humanity itself. It's very interesting when we think about the future of automation and digitisation, how do we prepare students? At least 50 to 60% of the jobs in the future they'll be stepping into haven't been invented yet. The unknown is not necessarily something that should be feared, it should be embraced.